The opening of this book, we pick up with Reed Richards, who is now known as The Maker, where we see him hanging around with other people, talking about how this is the perfect place to release the dome. The dome is going to be the main point of this story, but we are going to see some interesting things for this dome by Reed Richards. Then we pick up with Nick Fury, and remember, he's back in charge of S.H.I.E.L.D. This is picking up after Ultimate Fallout. Also, bringing in elements of Jeff Lowe's new Ultimates in Hickman's Ultimate Thor, where we see Nick Fury going over what is going on over the world, starting with Asgard being on Earth now. The European government sent in their Excalibur team because some Asgardians stole some huge amount of beer. Also, there is another problem going on in Seer, which is the Southeast Asian Republic area. Hawkeye is going down there to handle that issue in his own book, and we are going to cover that book next week. Then we proceed on to another issue that is going on between two countries that is about to break out into war. Now, Iron Man was supposed to be there with the S.H.I.E.L.D. team to handle that problem, except the man is in Tokyo flirting with a woman, and his new assistant had to remind him that, hey man, you are supposed to be helping out S.H.I.E.L.D., where we see that Iron Man has a piloting system where he is able to control a suit that he has on one of the S.H.I.E.L.D. helicarriers from his case in his car. Getting back over to Asgard's beer problem, we see that things are about to go down. But something I want to remind you guys is that Euro countries each have their own captain, Captain Britain, Captain Spain, and so on. But they were sent into Asgard because of the beer that was stolen. And Thor was sent in by S.H.I.E.L.D. to handle the tension between the two sides. So when Thor tried to make amends with Captain Britain, Captain Britain pours the beer on the floor in front of Thor. And this is a sign of disrespect. And for Nick Fury who is watching this, knows that this is about to start a fight. And so now Nick Fury has to worry about three different situations across the world. Asgard, the war between the two countries, and also Seer. But while watching this fight, a couple things happen. The first is that Iron Man breaks into one of the ships of the two countries who are at war to stop it. Except when he gets in there, there is no one controlling the ship. It is moving remotely. And also, with the fight between Thor and Captain Britain, leads into the steps of the dome that was made by Reed Richards. But before we see more of those things happen, you have Hawkeye checking in from Seer, where he is letting Nick Fury know that everything is falling apart out there as well. Before Hawkeye can give us more details, something happens and they lose connection with him. Then with Iron Man, he tells Nick Fury about the fact the ship has no one controlling it. So when Iron Man breaks open different parts of the ship, he finds his tech in there. But this tech came from his company is a nuke and it goes off wiping the area out for one, but sending a shock to Tony Stark who was controlling the suit from his car in Tokyo. So getting back over to the base of S.H.I.E.L.D., Nick Fury lost the signal what was happening with Iron Man thanks to the nuke. That begins the process of everything falling apart because after that you have Thor and Captain Britain decide to see what is up with the dome. They get grabbed into the dome and we see that by the beginning of this book to this point now inside the dome the city has evolved quickly and time moves differently there. And so when you have an agent asking Nick Fury what he wants to do next Nick Fury has no idea what to do because everything is falling apart left and right. But then the story gives us the background of how the city was built. Remember, in the beginning of our video, we saw that it started with Reed Richards and some people. Well, after that, we learned 
that they started to reproduce and have children of their own. Now remember that time moves faster inside the dome. It then got to the point where they began to create their own children. Now at first, the children they created looked wrong or imperfect, but then it began to make more. Each person in the dome has one single task they must do, and that is it. But after 900 years has passed inside the dome, they built the city, and the city is a living being. Switching back to Iron Man, we learn that after the shock he received from the nuke from his Iron Man suit that was with S.H.I.E.L.D., he went into cardiac arrest, and luckily, his new assistant that he forced to be called Jarvis has saved his butt. Now, most times after you go into cardiac arrest, you want to rest, except for Iron Man, he has no time to rest since he saw someone use his tech to build a nuke and set the nuke off. And so now Iron Man has to take his backup suit and go visit the Kratos Club, this organization he joined back in Ultimate Fallout that believes that they have the right to make tough choices for the entire world because they have a lot of money. Picking up with Thor, Captain Britain, and the other captains who are working together to fight against the forces of the Maker, we see them getting wrecked, that they don't even stand a chance against these children of the Maker. Remember, on the outside of the dome, time progressed normal, but inside the dome, time was rapidly passing by, and the Maker's people have evolved beyond what a regular human is. So when Thor tries to take them down, they just come right back stronger. It gets to the point where we think that Thor and the captains have all failed. It leads into a moment where you have the children of the dome begin to test on Thor and the captains, but the children are focusing more on Thor because he is different because he is a god. So it intrigues them to the point the city, which is a living being, calls the maker, and the maker tells the children that Thor is a god. With that knowledge, they evolved again to the point they understand what kind of god Thor is, but also picks up on Asgard. With them locating Asgard, the Maker tells them to go and bring down Asgard. Now, Captain Britain wants to run back home to Europe to get more help, but Thor and the other captains want to help the Asgardians, so they go their separate ways. Now, when Thor gets to Asgard to help his fellow Asgardians, he is already too late. The Asgardians have failed left and right. The children of the Maker are killing them left and right. And so what he has to do now is take his son Modi, the child he had with Hela back in New Ultimate Storyline, to the World Tree. The reason why the World Tree is so important is because there is a hidden realm known as the Room with No Doors. He puts Modi in there to protect him and to live on for Asgard. Thor hands his son Modi his hammer as a way to get out later, but Thor and Loki continue to fight against the forces of the Maker. After all of that, you would think everyone is dead, except we learn that Thor is the last person alive. Iron Man comes in and saves Thor at the very last second, but Asgard is gone once again, leaving Thor on his own once again on Earth. Now, picking up a couple of days after the fall of Asgard, we actually pick up with Tony showing Thor his hidden vault of things he has found over the years. We don't get a tour of the room, but what we do see is that he has Thor old suit when he first showed up in Ultimate Comics. Remember that when Thor first arrived in Ultimate Marvel Universe, he was powerless and the Europe version of S.H.I.E.L.D. gave him their tech to make him a hero. With his hammer gone, he needs a weapon to help them fight the Maker. But there is another reason for him picking up his old hammer and body gear for this story. But picking up a week after Asgard has fallen, we learn one thing from a page. 
Captain Britain and some members of Excalibur went back to fight against the Maker and his forces at the Dome, and they failed. Except now we are seeing S.H.I.E.L.D. and the Ultimates about to take their turn at trying to take down the Maker in the Dome. Let me tell you guys now, this was a huge mistake for them because they brought everything with them and before sending out heroes, they tried firing missiles and other stuff of course, that failed, and so it is time for Plan B, which is sent in Iron Man and Thor, the two heroes who can actually fly out there and cause some havoc in the air. Except again, when it comes to the Maker and his forces, they are so advanced, they are still struggling against him. Heck, it gets to the point that the Maker forces actually invades the helicarrier that Nick Fury and the Ultimates are using. They get wrecked on there, and they were able to push the forces off the ship, but then you have Nick Fury go to Plan C. The Ultimates brought a nuke with them, and they fired the nuke at the dome, hoping to wrap everything up in a matter of seconds. Well, of course, the nuke to the dome is outdated because the Maker and his forces are so advanced, and they just walk through the blast like it is nothing to them. And so after all of their plans failed, you have Black Widow, who is Monica Chang, the ex-wife of Nick Fury, convince him that they need to pull back and come up with a new plan. Now remember that Thor's old hammer had the ability to teleport. And so that was the second reason why Iron Man gave him the old hammer as an escape goat just in case things failed. Well, here we are. Things are falling apart for S.H.I.E.L.D. and the Ultimates, and so they have to leave, which gives us Thor using his hammer to teleport everyone away to protect them. Later that day, you have a bro moment with Thor and Iron Man, where Iron Man tells Thor about how bad it is for them with all of the damage they have taken, except this leads to Thor telling Iron Man how much he respects him and that he hopes that Iron Man will tell stories about him after he dies. That is when Iron Man realizes that Thor is planning to teleport back to where the dome is and fight them again, which he does because this is him trying to get revenge for the loss of Asgard. Is Thor not thinking straight, more of him upset with Asgard being gone once again. Now when Thor gets there, he does not just smash his way into the place, instead he walks in there. But also when he does, of course Reed Richards aka The Maker gets word from the city, the living being, that hey, Thor is here, and so of course, the Maker believes it is time to do something about Thor. Now, Thor walks into a room where we see that the Maker and his people are now growing children to be perfect, where the nurse there tells Thor and us that the dome was made for the Maker and the people, but the city, the living being, was made for these perfect children. But she tells him that they are keeping people like him down the hallway. That is where Thor finds out that Captain Britain is still alive, where we thought he was killed. Since they said earlier that Captain Britain and Excalibur try to take down the Maker and failed before they are able to escape, that is when you have the Maker appear, where he tells Thor and Captain Britain that he is going to send Thor back with a message. For Thor, he can tell if he beats the Maker down, maybe everything will stop, and so Thor goes to attack the Maker. Now at first, this may seem like Thor is about to be put on the spotlight in this book and just be able to take everything down, except that is when the Maker sent in the first knife, one of his soldiers, who just brutally beats down on Thor. It wasn't even a challenge for this guy. Remember that Thor is the most powerful Ultimates member, and so seeing him getting beat down like this is painting a picture how bad this is for the heroes. This leads into the Maker showing Thor his face, and they were doing this scene like 
we did not know it was Reed Richards, even though we have books before this that implied that it was Reed Richards. Except he tells Thor about the deal the world will take and they don't have a choice. As long as the other countries stay away from the dome and the maker and his people, they will not attack the other countries. So he leaves Thor in a bloody mess and has Captain Britain be the one to carry him back to S.H.I.E.L.D. Now let's remember that Asgard had fallen. All of the Asgardians except Thor and his son Modi died. Well apparently Thor has become Valhalla, meaning that all of the lost souls of Asgardians all went into the body of Thor, that somehow he has become the afterlife for his people. Where you have Odin tell Thor that he needs to continue the goal Odin had placed for Earth, making Earth in Odin's image, making it better. So Thor is never alone because all of his family and his friends are inside the body of Thor. Finally, to close on this book, you have Thor and Captain Britain go back to S.H.I.E.L.D. and Nick Fury, where you have Thor tell Nick Fury about the deal that Reed told was being made about staying away from each other. Finally, you have Thor tell Nick Fury that Reed Richards is the maker. He has come back and now a new problem for the world to handle. And this is where we are going to end today. Now, this book picks up in the middle of our first Jonathan Hickman's ultimate video, where we see Hawkeye arriving at Seer, which is also known as Southeast Asian Republic. This was a country that was recently formed and S.H.I.E.L.D. has a Triskelin in that country. Now, the reason why Hawkeye is here is because S.H.I.E.L.D. got word that Seer was being attacked by a rogue group. Their goal is to figure out who is this rogue group and stop it. Before he got there, S.H.I.E.L.D. was told that this rogue group only controls a small area of the country. But in reality, this rogue group has taken over the country completely. And so Nick Fury tells Hawkeye to go ahead with the mission and help out taking down this rogue group. But... Before they can finish talking, that is when the Seer Triskelin gets attacked. This is where we get our first look at the metahumans in this country, which is really the rogue group that is attacking the government, where of course these metahumans are going to play a big role in this story. But they are here to tell Hawkeye and the rest of S.H.I.E.L.D. they need to leave. But before we can see more of that fight, we actually have to jump back one month before the present day. Where we see the scientists talking to the Chancellor of Bangkok. And we see here that these two scientists have a two-step plan to help make Seer a powerful country. Starting with making a virus that will get rid of the mutants because America and other countries have a high amount of mutants. Seer is behind in the genetic race. And so they made an airborne virus that will go around the world and cure the X gene in people to stop the growth of the mutant race. The second part of their plan was to grow their own form of metahumans, which leads into the serum. What a catchy name that is. But basically, it is Seer making their own version of mutants. Because remember, in this universe, mutants were a man-made creation. So now the goal of these two scientists to help their country is to cure the mutant problem and basically make their own superhumans. Except for these group of people, we see that they do gain a high level of power when their powers begin to manifest. We see that from one of their test subjects, but they kill him off before he is able to do anything. But getting back to the present day, we get to see our boy Hawkeye, well being Hawkeye really, 
meaning that we see him take on the three metahumans that attack the Seer Triskelin. Remember that Hawkeye does not miss. This man will make sure he hits his targets. So one by one, we watch this man take down the three metahumans who attack the shield Triskelin. After the fight, you have Hawkeye call up Nick Fury, telling him everything he knows about this serum that was made here in Seer. The whole thing about getting rid of the mutant race because it would power up the US and making their own metahumans. This also breaks the treaty that U.S. and Seer had with each other. And so you have Nick Fury tell Hawkeye to get a sample of that serum to help them figure out how they're going to handle this new problem. Now we get a few pages of these S.H.I.E.L.D. agents trying to get somewhere safe, but they are attacked by a group of Seer soldiers. So they get in a situation where it seems that they might be killed off only to be saved by Hawkeye and his group of soldiers at the very last second. What is really big is that Hawkeye sees one of the metahumans that Seer has made here in their country. A little girl being able to walk up to a tank, stop a large amount of bullets being fired at her, then she turns around and blows up the tank. This is just showing how powerful these guys are that these new metahuman powers fly off the chart. The question is, what can Hawkeye and his soldiers do to stop something like this from getting out of hand? Then we finally learn a little bit more about the origin of Ultimate Hawkeye in this universe. Where we see him being interrogated by a random person, but this person tells us that Hawkeye used to be a gold medalist, except he went from that to doing crime. But while explaining that, this man tells us that Hawkeye's body is not normal. Or his eyes actually have 4 million rod cells in his eyes. But a normal person only has 1 in 50 million rods in their eyes. Explains why he is so good. But also his eyes can tell him what is real and what is fake. This is when he reveals that there was a fake window in the room and behind it was Nick Fury who was thinking about recruiting Hawkeye and tells him that he is in the program. Getting back to the present day, we pick up with Hawkeye, some of his soldiers and the two scientists trying to get to the lab where the serum was made. Remember, the mission is to get a sample of that serum, except this leads into another problem for Hawkeye and the company, where the scientist tells Hawkeye that it would take years to recreate what they made. All of the tech, notes, and chemicals needed are all gone, and so coming here was pointless. Now Hawkeye was planning to kill off the scientists since they are basically useless to him now. But that is when you have one of the S.H.I.E.L.D. agents come to Hawkeye with another problem. They walk outside to see a group of metahumans using their powers to blow up another building. To Hawkeye, this is getting out of hand and above his pay grade. So their next goal is to find one of their hidden bases they have left in the area and call up Nick Fury for a plan. When they get to their top secret base to call up Nick Fury, he tells Hawkeye about a message that was played across the world, which is a character named Oracle, who is basically one of those metahumans that was made recently. But you have this guy tell the world that he and the metahumans have taken over Seer and are now calling it Tuwan. I know I just butchered that, but forgive me. This is where Nick Fury tells Hawkeye that he is sending help, which is the Ultimate X Team, Karen Grant, aka Jean Grey, Liz Allen, aka Firestar, and then Derek Morgan, aka The Guardian. But he is also sending in the Hulk to help out with this new problem. Before we can see the Ultimate X and Hawkeye working together, we actually see another memory where Nick Fury tells Hawkeye about him being a free man. Thanks to Nick Fury, all of Hawkeye's past has been erased. 
he has given a restart in his life, but also made a captain in S.H.I.E.L.D. So this is Nick Fury giving Hawkeye a new beginning in life with him being on S.H.I.E.L.D. now. Now, in the present day, it has been a whole week since Nick Fury has sent the Ultimate X team to help out with the situation, where now the metahumans have made two cities that are floating in the air. This is showing how quickly these characters are evolving and being able to change the world. But you have the team decide it is time to move in and get a sample of the serum to bring back to Nick Fury. Now you have most of the team moving into the northern city because that is where it seems the serum could be yet. And so you had this team try to sneak in. But part of Hawkeye's plan is to have someone else in the southern city to cause a distraction for him and his main team. Of course, that distraction is no other than the Hulk himself. And we get to see the Hulk wreck the city. I mean, he tries to because we're going to see that even though they have a Hulk on their side, it does not mean that these guys are going to win so easily. Because we see while the Hulk is wrecking the southern city, you have Hawkeye and the Ultimate X sneaking into the north city. Where you have Karen Grant aka Jean Grey say that she has lost connection to the Hulk. But we see Hawkeye and his team continue to go deeper into the cave until they run into some citizens of the northern city. Where you have Jean Grey being able to read the mind of the young lady to find out they are no longer calling it the serum, but now it is called the source. Now here comes one of the biggest moments of the book because you have Hawkeye and his team continue to go deeper into the northern city to find a sample of what is now called the source. Except when they get deeper into the city this time they enter a room where they are greeted by someone. For now we cannot see this person but we do know for one thing that this person is in a room which shows us that the metahumans who have taken over Seer, well, they show us in Hawkeye that they have a high amount of the source. They were able to reproduce the product to give more people across the world powers. The second biggest moment comes at the end of this third chapter where we see that Hulk is still in the southern city but he's getting his butt kicked by the leader of the southern city where we see the Hulk get depowered back into Bruce Banner. We also get our first appearance of Ultimate Zorn. Something to point out in this universe, you have a Zorn spell X-O-R-N and another Zorn spell Z-O-R-N. Twin brothers who were the ones who led the revolution in Seer. Where we see that with their powers and being able to have followers, they were able to change their country into two cities we see today. Now, the two cities stand for each of the brothers' theology. For Zorn with an X, he stands for the idea of all enlightening as bright as the sun. For Zorn spelled with a Z, he was more of the idea of consuming all men and women. The northern city is led by Zorn with an X and that city is called the Celestial City. The southern city led by Zorn with a Z is called the Internals. Now there is a Zorn in the main Marvel Universe, but both of the brothers use the same name really, X-O-R-N. They kept it simple. Now they both had the same powers, if I remember correctly, except one brother could heal. The other one I think had telekinesis as well. Could be wrong, but the brothers in this universe are a little bit different from each other. Zorn with an X just has telekinesis and telepathy, while the other one with the Z has the black hole ability. Now the Zorn who is with Hawkeye explains that basically both brothers are recruiting people to their cause. The one with Hawkeye actually has more, but he tells Hawkeye they need to hurry and save the Hulk. 
from his brother because his brother is not the nice one meaning that his brother could kill the hulk which is true his brother is not killing off the hulk right now he's just playing around with the hulk with the intentions to kill off the hulk soon Luckily for the Hulk, you had the arrival of his team in Hawkeye, where you had the Orange Zorn tell the Black Zorn that they need to stop and actually try to help advance the world. Of course, the Black Zorn says it's a bad idea to bring in people who are not the same metahuman. And so you had the Orange Zorn tell Oracle to send out the message to the world kind of like he did earlier in this video, except this time, this is more of him telling the world that if you want to join either the Celestials or the Internals, you can. The door is open for you now. Now, after doing that, of course, you have some people on the Hawkeye team who will decide to stay behind instead of going back to America. And so you have Karen Grant, AKA Jean Grey, decide to stay behind with one of the cities. Now Hulk wants to stay too, but since he kills some people, the Eternals, they tell him no and send him away, which he lands somewhere that apparently he has been there before. But to close on this story, we actually see Hawkeye has returned back to S.H.I.E.L.D where you have Nick Fury give Hawkeye an update on everything that had happened in our first Jonathan Hickman video. But this is where you have Nick Fury ask Hawkeye if he was able to get a sample of the source, where of course, Hawkeye reveals that he does have a sample of the source. The story is more of a recap, but also moving pieces for future books down the road. You can see that when we pick up with Nick Fury, who is at the White House, about to meet with the president. Before he does, he meets with the Chief of Staff Morgan, who gives us reminders on what is happening out in the world. Reed Richards and the children have taken over most of Europe. Seer, which is being led by the Zorn twins, have become a powerhouse country. S.H.I.E.L.D. in America have no plans on how to stop them, but in reality, both these new threats told the rest of the world to stay away and there will be no problem. Except the president can accept that because America has gone from top of the world as an army power to third in a matter of weeks. Then we pick up with Tony Stark and his new assistant, who he just basically calls Jarvis, are on a plane going towards the base of the Kratos Club. Remember that the Kratos Club is this organization of the richest people who think they have the right to use their money to lead the world in the correct direction. In our last video, Tony figured out that they used one of his nukes in the middle of a battle between two countries. So he is going there to confront them about it. Also the fact he looks at the stock market. Even though his own personal company is losing money, him having a membership with the Kratos Club made him money, but he does not care about that because they use one of his nukes to kill hundreds or thousands of people. Now, there are a couple pages where we see Spider-Woman returning to the Triskelin to find a folder waiting for her. Of course, this is tied into our first Miles Morales Ultimate Spider-Man video, where she learns that there is someone running around as Spider-Man again, but right after the death of Peter Parker. So we know she leaves to go meet with that Spider-Man, Miles Morales. But picking up with Hawkeye, Again, this is another recap, but this is more of a recap of what Hawkeye was doing in his mini series that we covered a couple weeks ago. That Seer, which was known as the Southeast Asian Republic, is now gone and has been replaced by Tien. Tien is being led by Zorn and Zorn, the Zorn twins. But while Hawkeye was there, he was able to grab a sample of the source, which made people turn people from regular humans 
to metahumans. Also the fact that mutants from all of the countries are leaving and heading over to Tien for protection. But it seems that Hawkeye is thinking about using the serum as a way to restart the super soldier program. He's telling this to everyone at the Pentagon. Then we pick up with Thor, who is right now having dinner with Jane Foster, where she tells us that Thor and Jane Foster have moved into Tony Stark's building. Thor tells us the reason is because since he is using his old Thor tech again, there could be complications with him. Tony Stark wants to monitor him, but Jane Foster can tell something else is up with Thor. There is, because remember, in our last Ultimus video, Thor found out that he has become the embodiment of Valhalla. So all of the dead Asgardians from our last video are now inside of him, so he can see them, but this is something he is not used to, especially having a ghost trying to give him instructions on what he should do with his life. Get another piece that is being used right now in this overarching storyline where you have a few pages just focusing on the present day and also focusing on the past as well where it is Falcon meeting up with Nick Fury and they are having a meeting about sending someone into the dome that is being run by Reed Richards and the children that Falcon had made some kind of tech where it will make him invisible and should be untraceable, meaning that he can sneak in and be able to gather information from the inside of the dome. But then we get the answer to one of the questions that has been asked, where in the world is Captain America? Well, remember, he quit after Ultimate Fallout, but we see Nick Fury going to New Mexico where he is meeting up with Captain America and he is hoping to convince Captain America to rejoin S.H.I.E.L.D. once again. This is where Nick Fury is letting Captain America know what is going on in the world, but again, trying to convince Captain America to come back to the team. Captain America asks Nick Fury why it is so important for him to come back. You have Nick Fury basically say he needs Captain America to represent the opposite of what the president wants to do. Remember that Nick Fury had a meeting with the president and apparently the president is planning something that is going to get a lot of people killed. So Nick Fury wants Captain America, who is an idol to the American people, to stand against the president. But since the death of Peter Parker, Captain America does not want more blood on his hands. So he says no. Picking back up with Tony Stark, we see him meeting up with the Kratos Club about what they did with a nuke. Where of course he is making threats and trying to tell them about the fact how wrong it was for them to do what they did. But at the same time, they have a counter argument against him that with them doing that and crashing the global market, before that, they only own 0.7%, not even a full percentage of the global assets. After their small stunt, they now own 9%, which is a huge jump. They now own 9% of the world assets. Again, Tony is realizing that they are making moves to make them richer so they can change the world in their image. Also, they are holding on some information about Tony Stark with his people killing way more people than the nuke the Kratos Club sent off. Now we pick up with Jamie Braddock, who is the new Captain Britain and the brother to the last one, Brian Braddock, where we learn how Brian Braddock got cancer that with him using the first version of the Captain Britain suit, it gave him cancer. So his brother is taking his place, letting us know that Brian is going to die. But Jamie let us know that it is thanks to their father making the suit that basically it led to his death. But getting back to Falcon, who snuck into the dome, which again belongs to Reed Richards and the children, well, where he thinks his tech is working, making him invisible to the whole dome security, 
Well, we come to find out because time moves differently inside the dome, it has been thousands of years inside the dome. So Falcon Tech is outdated compared to theirs. They pick up on him and capture him in a matter of seconds. Now the maker does not kill off Falcon. What he does instead is give Falcon a pass. That because Falcon is a scientist, he can come and leave here freely anytime he wants to. He can report what he found inside here to S.H.I.E.L.D. and the rest of the world. The reason why is because the maker wants to show that he was able to make a society where there is complete peace before we close off on this video we see hawkeye and nick fury sitting down again talking about all of their different situations across the world where you have hawkeye explain that he has a plan to actually defeat both the children of tomorrow and the metahumans from tian his plan involves using tian and the ultimate x team that had left to join tian once they took over seer Nick Fury tells Hawkeye to form his team and get the job done. And this is where we are going to end today's video. So please. So to begin this video, we pick up with Zorn with an X because there are two Zorn characters in this universe. The other one starts with a Z, but we see the other Zorn with an X telling one of his people, the Oracle, that they need to get ready to welcome the world to heaven. They consider their city they have built as heaven. But we see them preparing to greet some Americans, of course, that means Nick Fury and some members of the Ultimate. This leads us a few hours ago where we see some of the Ultimates talking about the two Zorns in the cities they have built. This is more of a review, where if you remember from our Hawkeye video and Volume 1 of the Ultimates by Jonathan Hickman video, that the country that was known as Seer had decided to make their own superhumans, which of course, it led to them making their own formula to make these superhumans. The problem is that it led to the superhumans taking over the country and forming two cities as their own country that is being led by the Zorn brothers. Each city is controlled by one of the Zorns, also, they took the formula and called it the source to bring in more people to their cause. But S.H.I.E.L.D.'s goal is to inform them about Reed Richards, who is going by the name The Maker and his children, and hopefully get help to fight against them. With that being said, both Zorns had the ability to read other people's mind. So of course, both the brothers read the mind of Nick Fury, where they find out why he is here for. Of course, this leads to a disagreement about the topic, where the one brother disagrees to help Nick Fury and S.H.I.E.L.D. because he knows that Nick Fury is planning to have both parties go against each other in a big war to hopefully kill both of them off, while the other brother is down to help Nick Fury and S.H.I.E.L.D. out. He tells Oracle to use his powers as a way to send a message over to the city that is controlled by the Maker, aka Reed Richards. Of course, this leads to a very big moment because you have Oracle who is able to use his powers as a way to appear in front of people as this big head to send a message where, of course, he is able to access the city. Now, the Maker tells us that any contact from the outside world shouldn't be able to talk to them while being in the city. Something else to mention is that the city is an AI system, but the city realized that Oracle has powers, which means he is not using technology. 
it learns the origin of Oracle and you have the maker decide it is time for him to make a move. So he uses the power of the city to take control of the mind of Oracle so he can send a message, which of course is him saying that because Nick Fury and S.H.I.E.L.D. had disregarded his peace treaty, he's now coming after them, but also coming after the Zorn brothers and their people. Also, with the Maker taking over the body of Oracle, Oracle ends up dying. Then we learn something else is going to happen because above the city, the Hulk is about to drop down on the city. If you remember, the Hulk was sent away to somewhere else in our Ultimate Hawkeye video. Well, we come to find out that he was sent to the Himalayas, where of course, if you remember way back in our Ultimate Hulk vs Wolverine video, he went there to hide, but also when Wolverine found him, he was this peaceful being. Like Bruce was able to control the Hulk. We're seeing the same thing again, but he is greeted by Agent Flum, or Flum. I want to say it's Flum. Now, Agent Flume lets us know that the president is tired of waiting on Nick Fury and S.H.I.E.L.D. to handle both the Zorn Brothers situation and the Maker situation. So his plan is to get rid of S.H.I.E.L.D., the Ultimates, and Nick Fury. But Flume is trying to help the president take down the Maker. So Flume's idea is to get the Hulk and send him in. Remember, the Hulk never attacked the city. Now at first, Hulk says no, but his answer changed when Flume says that the American government is holding on to Betty Ross. Because remember, in this universe, she is She-Hulk. He said they are holding on to her and testing on her to reproduce a Hulk. So Agent Flume was able to convince the Hulk to go and attack the city. Remember, this is the first time the Hulk has attacked the city, where of course, the children of the city never met the Hulk, nor know anything about him. So with that happening, they're sending out a ton of different people to hopefully beat him before he can cause some major damage only for him to stop when he is confronted by the Maker, where you have the Maker showing no signs of being scared and actually asks the Hulk what in the world he is doing here. Getting back over to the country of Tien that is being run by the two Zorn brothers, we see Nick Fury and the Ultimates trying their best to convince Zorn with an X to leave the city before the children of the Maker arrive to destroy the area. Because with Zorn making Oracle send that message that was heard by the Maker, the Maker is sending out an army of his children to wipe out Tien. Except this is the moment where you have Zorn with an X tell everyone that the children won't even make it to his city because his brother with the Z is really powerful and this includes all of the citizens of Tien because they all have powers as well. We then see the president meeting Gut with some of his board members but this is the moment that changes everything for this book because we see him meeting Gut with Congress about his new plan to take down the maker and the city. This plan begins instantly because we see Spider-Woman and Captain Britain chilling in the Triskelin, minding their own business. Well, more of Captain Britain being annoying towards Spider-Woman. But right before she goes off on him, that is when they are hit with some kind of chemical gas that knocks both of them out. We see some US soldiers moving in to grab them after they were knocked out by the gas. After that, this is where we learn about the Winter Protocol. We learn this when we see Thor and Tony Stark working on something big that could help them win this war against the city and Reed Richards. Except while they are working on this project, that is when they are attacked by some soldiers. Of course, they are there to bring them in. The Winter Protocol is a thing where the president pulls the plug on S.H.I.E.L.D., 
the Ultimates and Nick Fury. Bring them in and they stay locked up until they are done with whatever situation. To close on chapter two of this video, we get two settings at the same time. One being the president talking about his plans to handle the maker in the city. At the same time, we see the maker talking to the Hulk and wondering why he is helping a country that has used him so many times but also hates him too. Hulk tells him how the government is holding on to Betty, who is She-Hulk in this universe. Now, you have Reed talking to the Hulk to convince him that he got tricked once again. They are never going to give the Hulk Betty. While the maker says that, that is when we learn the president's plan to handle the maker. His plan was to fire all of America's nuke at the city hoping that it will finally be the key and of course the maker and the hulk see the missiles coming letting hulk know once again he was being used focusing back on nick fury monica chang and hawkeye we see them leaving the city of tian because they want to watch the big battle between the children of the maker and the citizens of tian but we also learn that they are worried about what has happened back home with the rest of the Ultimates and the Triskelin because they are unable to get in contact with them and so they have an idea that things are not okay back at home. Back at the Triskelin, we see Agent Flum freaking out because he got word about two Ultimates have not been captured which of course those two are Thor and Tony Stark who are fighting against the soldiers that were sent to grab them. This fight is short lived because these two know how to fight but after the fight Tony Stark learns about the Winter Protocol meeting and learns that basically the Ultimates are now outlaws in their own country. But before Tony Stark and Thor leave Thor sees that Tony knows is bleeding, meaning that something is seriously wrong with Tony Stark. Shifting back to Nick Fury, Monica Chang, and Hawkeye, we see them watching the fight between some of the children and some of the people from Tien, where of course the children are adapting because where they are from inside the dome, inside the city, time moves differently. Years are passing by at a faster rate. And so they have technology to help them adapt to their battle against the people of Tien. Well, until we see Zorn with an X take off his mask, where we see him use his powers to create a black hole. Now, a lot of folks say this is the moment where he died, but we see him take out a chunk of the children of the Maker. Back at the city, we see Reed Richards talking to the Hulk, but also his children, where he tells them to bring out a special child, a child that was never given a name. And of course, the reason why, because this child was supposed to represent the idea of death, be the first to represent it. But he gives this young boy a seed to take with him teleports the boy over to Washington DC where of course you have the president and the people of Congress there where we see this child blow up the entire city of Washington DC killing everyone in the city. We then pick up with Senator Howard who is like the energy secretary. The reason why this is so important Thanks to Reed Richards, aka the maker, recent attack in Washington, D.C., he had killed so many people that when it comes to the chain of who becomes the president after the president had died, it had fallen down to Senator Howard. That is how many people who were in the chain to become president had died. War Machine has to come to get him and make him the president of the United States of America. Then we get to jump back a minute before Reed Richard has sent in the child to blow up Washington DC. We see that there were people just minding their business but of course they were caught in the blast. And so the death total is high. 
which is pretty obvious. But also, we see that some astronauts in space can see the explosion as well, letting us know how big the explosion was. But getting back over to the Triskelin, with the Winter Protocol removing Nick Fury from being in charge of S.H.I.E.L.D., now Agent Flum, or Flum, sorry, is in charge of S.H.I.E.L.D. With that happening, we learn from Nick Fury how much of a snake Agent Flume is, meaning that maybe he had a hand in the activation of the Winter Protocol. But we see Nick Fury, Monica Chang, Falcon, and Hawkeye arrive on the helicarrier, only to be told that Agent Flume is in charge of S.H.I.E.L.D. now. He orders S.H.I.E.L.D. agents to capture Nick Fury and them. Now, of course, these guys don't get taken in that easily because as soon as he heard about the fact they were supposed to be captured, all of them jumped off the helicarrier to get away. Picking up with Thor and Tony Stark, we see that they are also still on the run, except we see Tony talking to a younger version of himself that of course is just his imagination in his own head. He is confronted by Thor, where you have Thor wondering what is their next move. You have Tony tell Thor that he has a plan in mind, but at first they need to see someone. Really, he needs to see a doctor to be more exact, because something is really wrong with Tony Stark. Now we do see Monica Chang, Hawkeye, and Falcon breaking out of a container in California. With that happening, of course, they are easily located by S.H.I.E.L.D., which we can see back at the Triskelin, Agent Flume and S.H.I.E.L.D. are about to send in a team to get them. But before we move on, we learn that some of S.H.I.E.L.D. facilities have shut down in Texas. With that happening, apparently, this is a sign that S.H.I.E.L.D. could be losing another state. But skipping over to the Baxter building, we don't only get a brief return of Susan Storm, who we have not seen since the Ultimate Dune trilogy, but we also see she is doing scans on Tony Stark, where we learn that Tony Stark's brain cancer has returned. And with his return, of course now, Tony Stark could possibly die again. But you have Tony tell Susan not to mention his brain cancer to anyone. But after he tells her that, this leads into him telling her about the return of Reed Richards and how he was the one who blew a huge chunk of Washington DC in the air. Then at the end of the fourth chapter, two things happen. The first being that you have the maker tell the city to prepare itself for any attack, which he reveals a hidden defense plan to help the city evolve. But at the same time, in the ruins of Asgard, we see something coming out of the room with no doors. We see the return of Modi, the son of Thor. The next day, we see Tony Stark calling up someone else we have not seen in a small bit of time, and that would be Carol Danvers. Remember, she was the one running S.H.I.E.L.D. but lost it to Nick Fury. After that, she has kind of been missing in comics. But something else to point out is that she used to date Tony Stark. And we see him trying to call her to ask her for a favor that can help him get the shield in the American government off his back, but also help him take down Reed Richards. Getting back to Monica Chang, Hawkeye, and Falcon, we see them arrive at a facility Nick Fury had hidden from the entire world. This is WCOS which is also known as West Coast Operational Security, where we meet up with Hugo Lopez, a scientist that was secretly working for Nick Fury, where he has been working on a secret project, and that project was to create a West Coast Ultimates team, more people with certain abilities. So Monica Chang plan is to awaken the subjects and use them to one, help Nick Fury, but also take down Agent Flume. That is when they come to find out that they have been found in under attack by S.H.I.E.L.D. 
And now the test subjects cannot be let out other test containers. At the Oval Office, we see the new president, President Howard. He is already thinking that Agent Flume is a failure, that he wants to know why they have S.H.I.E.L.D. agents chasing down three Ultimates when they should be focusing on the Maker. But this is where we learn that Texas decide to stop being part of America and form their own country once again. We actually see the meeting between members of Congress of the New Republic of Texas, where they are wondering about the defense, money, and any other problems. Also, we learn that they have more shield bases than any other state. They could buy all of them, but the banks are frozen. That is when we see Modi, the son of Thor, as an adult now, handing over gold that could help Congress with all of their problems. Skipping back to Tony and Thor, we see the meeting up with Carol Danvers, where she was able to give what Tony wanted, which was to be able to sit down and have a meeting with the president. The only catch is that he has to give himself in and come in under arrest, but this is him hoping that he can begin his plan to take down the maker, AKA Reed Richards. But before we can see him talking to the president, we actually have to see the fall of Falcon, Monica Chang and Hawkeye as they fight against shield agents and the team of giant men. Where of course, at first they are able to hold their own against these guys, but at the end of the fight, it was just too much for them to handle and so it leads to them all being captured. But we can now see what Tony Big plan is when it comes to taking down Reed Richards. We see him meeting up with the president and show the president that his plan involves a toy version of War Machine. Now this toy is honestly pretty cool, what it will do. But if Tony plan works, then the new president has to let all of the Ultimates go free where of course the president does agree to the plan. With him agreeing to the plan, it leads into the beginning of the plan that the American government hands Tony over to Reed as a peace treaty because something to point out is that Reed hates Tony because Tony always tried to paint a picture that he was smarter than Reed. In reality, he was not always gave Reed a hard time, and so giving Reed Tony, it gives the chance for Reed to do whatever he likes to Tony. This is where we learn that the child version of Tony we saw earlier was actually an AI where you had this AI become friends with the city, the AI that Reed Richard had built. This is very important. Because when Reed tries to call on the city to get rid of Tony, that is when he sees a giant side war machine appear, letting us know the two AIs have formed together, but also the city has turned against Reed, and so have the children. Remember, Reed made this city to be a perfect world, but in recent events, he has shown the opposite nature of a perfect world blowing up Washington, D.C., hiding defense plans from the city, and creating a child to represent death. All of this is the opposite of what he told the city and the children they were building. This leads into us seeing Reed Richards turning Hulk into a giant version of himself to fight against Anthony, the AI that looks like the younger version of Tony also hoping the Hulk will be enough to win back his city. But we also learn that Tony has a second plan, to bring down the defense to let someone else come in to help take down the city, but also get revenge. And you would think I'm talking about Thor, but in reality, I'm really talking about Susan Storm really. Because remember, 
her and Reed Richards used to date in our earlier Ultimate Marvel videos. So when she found out what Reed Richards did, she was more than down to help take him down. So we see her and Thor just wreck havoc and being able to take down both the Hulk and Reed Richards and save the day. Finally, to close on this book, but build up to the big event we are going to cover very soon, we see Captain America talking to a shop owner about him finally going back home after hearing what had happened in America. This is all leading into Divided We Fall, this big ultimate Marvel event that was done in all the ultimate titles. So, this is where we're going to end today's video.